Hi, I'm Mark. This is Mark's Tech Vlogs on YouTube. And today I'm going to bring you guys a review of the eKey Uno, which is a fingerprint reader for the Nuki Smart Lock. Now this is something I stumbled across recently and I decided I'd pick one up and review it because I actually really liked the idea of it. And also I spotted that there weren't really many reviews around for it, especially in the English speaking market. Now this accessory has been out for a year and a half and it's basically geared as an accessory for Nuki smart locks that allows you to open them from the outside of your house using your fingerprint. Now Iki also actually do a version that works with the Equiver smart lock, but I haven't actually used that smart lock or that version. And it does look like they are different versions depending on the smart lock. And if you're watching this video wondering if this product is any good because you've not really heard anything about it, then I'm going to save you the time of watching this review and saying I would not recommend this. If you want to find out why, keep watching. But if you simply want, uh, is this product any good? It's not. There is, however, one reason you might pick one up. And that leads me on to talk about pricing. So if you buy this product on its own, it costs about £150. Now this makes it about the same price as the Nuki Keypad 2. And of course, the Nuki Keypad 2 has a slimmer design and also has a fingerprint sensor on it as well as a physical keypad. You can also buy this device with packs that include the Nuki 3, Nuki 3 Pro, Nuki 4 and Nuki 4 Pro as well. And this is where it gets slightly strange because at the time of recording, you can buy a Nuki 3 pack with this device on Amazon for £105. Now to put that in perspective, the Nuki 3 on its own costs £150 on Amazon, which means the cheapest way of buying a Nuki 3 at the time of recording is to buy this at the same time. So at the start of this video, having used this product, the only reason you would buy one of these at the moment is because it is cheaper to buy it with the Nuki than it is to buy the Nuki on its own. And so let's talk more about the Iki Uno because this is a product that has been approved by Nuki and Nuki have even blogged about it on their website. And it looks like from that blog that at one point they sold them themselves. And I guess the question is when the price is the same as the Nuki Keypad 2, why would you pick one of these up over the Nuki Keypad 2? And personally, I think the main draw is actually the design and the functionality. For me, one of the big things about the Nuki as a smart lock is that from the outside, you can't tell that someone has one. Now, as soon as you slap something like a Nuki keypad on the outside of your house, a keypad is kind of a giveaway that something else is going on. The Iki Uno, however, has this kind of subtle looking device and it doesn't really look that different from something like a key safe. And I think unless you knew what you're looking for, you wouldn't even be able to tell this was a fingerprint scanner from the outside. And for me, I think this is a reason this might be a more appealing accessory for Nuki users over something like the keypad too. So let's talk about design. So the Iki Uno comes in a choice of white or black, although I personally prefer the choice of black for something that does go on the outside of your house. It is largely plain in design and it has rounded edges. On the top, you'll find a fingerprint scanner and also a ring of LED lights. All in all, it's a pretty nice design. And I think what you want from this is something that doesn't stand out. And so it does that really well. So let's talk about spec. So you can buy this with a choice of battery or mains power. And personally, I think battery is probably the better option to go because it means no hard wiring. The battery life on this device is six months, which is really good. And it does give you a visual indicator on those LED lights when battery is getting low. And of course, it's not the end of the world if the battery was to die on this because you could still use your key or your phone to get in. In the box, you get the eKey Uno itself. You get the battery pack, you get a charger, you get a load of instructions in different languages, and you get a really important card that has a QR code on it and Wi-Fi details. Now, Iki Uno say that if you lose this card, you will no longer be able to connect to your device. This is a pain because that's how you add fingerprints and control different settings and reset it if you need to. That means what I would recommend doing is making sure you take a photo or scan of that card when you first get it so you have got a backup. This means if you lose that card, you're not stuck, locked out, and you don't have to send it to Iki Uno to get you back in again. So the Iki Uno emits its own Wi-Fi network, and this is how you connect to it using your phone and the app. This is used for things like checking logs and configuring it. It then connects to your Nuki via Bluetooth. This is great for keeping a secure connection, especially as that Wi-Fi is only on when you enable it. And of course, you need the passcode. You can program up to 200 fingerprints or 20 people on the app. It's also weatherproof, which is great for outside use. And then finally, it comes with a three-year warranty. So let's talk about setting it up. So setting up initially involves charging the battery fully before you do anything else. From there, I recommend doing all the configuration steps before actually sticking it to your wall. This means you can do it indoors and move it around if you need to, rather than having to stand at the outside of your house like a lemon. Setting up all of this is done by the Iki Uno app. Once you've got the app downloaded, you long press the fingerprint scanner to put it into Wi-Fi mode, and then you just follow the instructions on the screen. This involves scanning that QR code so you can connect to the network of the device. The app works for Apple or Android, but as an Apple user, I've only tested it with that. 
Connecting to it was pretty easy initially, but I have found that reconnecting to it to add things like extra fingerprints or check the logs is actually a bit faffy and does take two or three attempts. I've even checked to see if there's a firmware update that would fix this and there's no firmware updates. Once you've connected to it, you can then add extra fingerprints, you can pair it with your Nuki lock, you can check logs, and you can also disable some of those fingerprint sensors as well. It's also worth noting that it doesn't require a bridge, so it can just work directly with your Nuki. Once you've done all the setup process, it's time to wall mount it. And you can do this with the included sticky pad or just using screws and raw plugs. The recommendation is that you mount it about 110 centimeters high, which I guess is at a finger waist level. From there to operate it, you just place your finger on the fingerprint scanner to wake it up. So let's talk about functionality. So this device is capable of locking and unlocking your Nuki depending on how you press it. To unlock it, you simply place your fingerprint on the scanner. It will then flash and then turn solid blue when it's verified it and then turn green to unlock. If you want to lock it, you repeat the above, but when the blue light is flashing, you take your finger off and place it on again. It will then verify your fingerprint and the light will turn yellow and it will lock. This also seems to work with the open mode, which is great. There's also a security feature you can enable in the app that means if there's 10 consecutive failed attempts, it will lock for three minutes. I've also found that programming fingerprints is pretty easy to do. Those lights can also give you a low battery warning. So when they light up in alternate corners red, that tells you battery is low. All in all, this functionality, especially those lights, is pretty well thought out. And this includes the ability to be able to check the logs if you can connect to it. So let's talk about what it's like to use because I've been using it for about a week. And the idea of this is that when you get home, you can just place your fingerprint on the scanner. It will scan your fingerprint, send the signal to Vanuki and boom, you're into your house. And it does work but very slowly. And what I found is that sometimes it takes a couple of attempts to actually wake it up initially. And then the whole process of it reading your fingerprint and trying to verify it and send the signal just takes a while. And that fingerprint scanner just isn't particularly responsive. And that's especially true when the weather's a bit rubbish and maybe rainy. And in that situation, you kind of need to dry it off first. And really, if you compare it to something like your fingerprint scanner on your phone, this thing is just much, much slower. And really 99% of the time, it's quicker to get the Nuki app up on your phone or use a key. Of course, that assumes you don't use the auto unlock geolocation feature from Nuki. And yes, there are some advantages in that you can give people access without them needing to have the Nuki app, but you do still need to program them into this. And there's not a feature with the fingerprints where you can enable them during certain times. This means if you wanted to give, say, your dog walker access between certain hours, you couldn't do that. The only way around that is if you were to kind of pair with the app by Wi-Fi and just toggle them off when they're not going to be dog sitting. This is faffy because as I said, it takes a few attempts to actually connect to it. So all in all, and you know where this is going, what's the verdict of the EQ, you know? And this is a product that, if I'm honest, disappointed me. The idea of a kind of subtle looking fingerprint scanner that could run that kind of open function on your lock sounded like a really good idea. It is, however, let down by the fact that that fingerprint scanner isn't very responsive. Connecting to it takes a while and it's just slow. And actually, I wonder if that's the reason that Nuki don't sell these on their site anymore, because if you look at their original blog, it says that they're gonna sell them. And I guess that means if you want a fingerprint scanner for the Nuki, then you need to get the keypad too. And if you're worried about security of passcodes, then just don't program any onto it. And of course, if you just used it as a fingerprint scanner, you could then potentially put it somewhere more subtle. I'd love to hear from other people who've used the EKI Uno who can perhaps tell me if their experience is the same. So if you have put a comment below, um, I have put a link to it below just in case you do want to check it out. But in my opinion, the only reason to pick one of these up is because at the moment, the cheapest way of buying a Nuki is to buy it in the pack with the kind of £106 deal that's going on, on Amazon where you get the Nuki 3 and the EQ Uno. And that's because that is £45 off the Nuki 3 price. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. Subscribe to my channel where I'm usually much more positive about products and I will see you guys again soon. Thank you.